All right, here we go. Uh, Saturday, 6 p.m. I'm Tom Novak. Thanks for joining me. And of course, if it's Saturday and I've got a video update, you know something's going on, something that's pretty serious. And uh, let's get right into it. Uh, there are flash flood watches, by the way, over a good chunk of southern Minnesota, basically the southern third of the state. So anywhere south of the Twin Cities metro, for the most part, is under a flood watch. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the Twin Cities is out of the woods. All right, so keep that in mind. I think there is going to be more rain even up in the Twin Cities. It just likely will not be at the extent that they get uh, down near the I-90 corridor, including Rochester, Minnesota. Here's your visible satellite loop, and here are the storms starting to explode again. They're redeveloping basically over the same spot now, and that'll be the same, or that'll be the case here through the evening and overnight periods. That's the reason why reason for a flood watch. We call that training of thunderstorms. And yes, that is starting to occur right now in southern Minnesota. In fact, radar shows that now. Here it is. Yes, uh, plenty of thunderstorms and heavy rain activity right now scattered in uh, southern Minnesota. But I expect basically this whole area here of southern Minnesota, including the Twin Cities Metro, to get more rain tonight. And the real good stuff, I think, is going to be right down here, north, northern Iowa, probably the uh, first uh, two tier of counties in northern Iowa. And then these southern two or three tier of counties in Minnesota are likely going to be the bullseye for the heaviest rain. Some areas, I do believe, are going to get in excess of four or five inches of rain. When all is said and done, it'll be in localized pockets. But still, regardless, that's a ton of rain. Some places even a lot more than that. So we'll see how that all transpires tonight. But just keep in mind, heavy rains are on the way for many of us that are watching this video. All right, here's your water vapor loop. We call this uh, the moisture channel from outer space. And uh, no doubt we have a west-southwest flow in our atmosphere. Uh, lots of moisture now being brought up from the Gulf of, Me Gulf of Mexico moisture now getting to entrained, getting entrained in the system and certainly some Pacific moisture. And that moisture is heading up and over now a front that is located right about here. It's a stalled front. And as moisture uh, slams into that front from the south and southwest, it rides up and over that front. And then that is what creates the thunderstorm activity and it gets to be widespread. In the winter, this would be a foot to two foot snow event, but since it's the summer, we're talking about torrential rains in some locations. Your jet stream, the River of Air at 30 to 35,000 feet shows a powerful jet streak. And this is really important here for the development of the training thunderstorms and heavy rain. A jet streak at about 150 knots located and embedded within this jet stream that is uh, basically moving from west to east across uh, northern Minnesota and southern Manitoba. And usually at the base or the right rear quad of a jet streak is where you get intense lift. And that jet streak stays in place. And I showed you this yesterday, but it stays in place through tomorrow. This is tomorrow afternoon. We still have that jet streak in place. Maybe not as strong, but it's still in place. And we also have a disturbance now moving into the Dakotas in Minnesota tomorrow. So if you don't get rain the rest of the night tonight, hang in there because pretty good opportunity for rain in this area of southern, eastern Minnesota, Wisconsin, and northern Iowa as we go through the day tomorrow as the actual parent disturbance moves east into the upper Midwest and then eventually it ejects out of the upper Midwest as we go into Monday. So we should be clear once a Monday approaches. All right, here's the disturbance. You can see it on the 500 millibar vorticity map. And anywhere you see these reds and purples and oranges, those are disturbances. We got one that is moving through the area this afternoon and evening. And I'll watch what happens as we go through time. Another disturbance, there you go. Let me just rewind this real quickly for you. Look at this disturbance that rolls through southern Minnesota, Wisconsin, and northern Iowa late tonight. And then the parent, the the mother load moves through tomorrow. You can see it here as we get into tomorrow afternoon and evening. So until that disturbance moves east out of Minnesota, we're going to be primed for precipitation, not only in the southern third of Minnesota, but through much of the southern half of the state. All right, winds at about 20 to 25,000 feet at 500 millibars shows you kind of the same thing that the jet stream, the 30 to 30, 
30 to 35,000 feet showed. You can see the strong winds just north of the Minnesota international border with Canada. And then here's that disturbance this afternoon with these uh, embedded stronger winds that are rolling through southern Minnesota as we speak. That continues throughout the evening. And then as we head into tomorrow now, this is tomorrow, right about noon tomorrow, and then in the, the afternoon tomorrow, look at this, these pretty strong winds that are moving into Minnesota and eastern South Dakota as we get into tomorrow afternoon. That's going to be another round of uh, significant precipitation, I think, for m many of us. So again, if you didn't get hit tonight, uh, hang in there because there's the potential for it tomorrow. Now here's another real problem for tonight, at least in southern Minnesota. These are the low-level winds and the winds at about 5,000 feet. And look how strong they uh, become over Nebraska and Iowa. This is what we call a low-level jet that uh, surges north and northeast into southern Minnesota as we get into uh, late tonight and early tomorrow morning. And usually on the nose of a low-level jet is where you'll get significant lift and precipitation. That's one of the reasons why a flood watch has been issued for southern Minnesota, northern Iowa, and a good chunk of Wisconsin. Now, those low-level winds are strong through the early morning hours. They taper off a bit as we get into tomorrow afternoon. But uh, no doubt, even as we get into tomorrow evening, look at this, still some southerly winds coming up into southern Minnesota. Not as strong as tonight, but still enough to cause some problems, I think, tomorrow over portions or a good chunk of southern eastern Minnesota and uh, Wisconsin. Here's your future satellite loop now from the NAM guidance. And here are the storms for this afternoon. Once again, redeveloping over southern Minnesota and portions of northern Iowa. And just a significant thunderstorm development here as we go through the evening and overnight hours. These are training thunderstorms, thunderstorms that develop on top of each other on a line and they don't move very fast. And that's gonna be the case here as we go through the overnight hours. And then even into tomorrow, you can see that this disturbance as it pinwheels through Minnesota tomorrow, some thunderstorms look like they're gonna to try to develop over southern Minnesota, southeastern Minnesota and Wisconsin as we go through the day tomorrow. Uh, with that being said, here's your severe weather potential for at least tonight. This would be for this evening and into the overnight hours, uh, for the most part south of the Twin Cities along or just south of this uh, warm front that is nearly stationary now over southern Minnesota. Of course, you get the winds in the upper levels that are strong moving from west to east and then in the lower levels from the south and southwest. And yes, that's a turning of the winds as you go up in our atmosphere. And that is a great recipe for organized storms and storms that could potentially be severe. And probably more importantly is the heavy rain event that is developing now over southern Minnesota. Keep in mind, areas just west of the Twin Cities like Wilmer, Hutchinson, these areas have already received two to four inches plus of rain. And I won't be surprised if they get a little bit more tonight and into tomorrow. But no doubt the real focus, the main focus is going to be just south of the Twin Cities along the I-90 corridor from oh, Albert Lee and Owatonna. On, and uh, Fairmont for that matter, on east to the Mississippi River and into Wisconsin. That would inclu include La Crosse, Winona, Wabasha, and then continuing east from there, perhaps even Eau Claire, Wisconsin, and Tomo, Wisconsin. So all these areas, I think, are under the gun for rainfall totals in excess of two to three inches in some areas, five, six, even more inches of rain. Now, of course, that will be more localized, those type of totals. But no doubt, this is something that needs to be watched here with flood watches for many of us. All right, that is your forecast. Thanks for joining me, everybody. Keep an eye to the sky and watch out for the rain over the next 24 hours or so. Take care.